That sound you just heard is probably the most recognizable news sounder in history. The ABC radio network used it until the late 1960s when it split its single network into four. Remember? In a pre-internet world, radio was important. In Bell Fountain, we listened to Hometown WOHP and to the Dayton stations, W-O-N-E and W-I-N-G, sometimes to W-C-O-L in Columbus, where West Liberty's Bob Harrington was a DJ. At night, we could hear W-O-W-O in Fort Wayne, Chicago's top 40 stations, W-L-S, W-C-F-L, C-K-L-W in Toronto, New York's WABC and WBZ in Boston, where late-night DJ Dick Summers insisted that sandwiches should be called Shrewsbury's. Much happened during our later years in school. In 1959 and 1960, we were in the seventh grade. An American U-2 spy plane piloted by Francis Gary Powers was shot down over Russia in May. Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev angrily ended a Paris summit conference because of that U-2 incident, and John Kennedy defeated Richard Nixon in a closely fought presidential race. In 1960 and 1961, we were eighth graders. As one of the last actions of his presidency, Dwight Eisenhower broke diplomatic relations with Cuba, a situation that was to continue until 2015. Later in the month, John Kennedy was sworn in as president. Our first year in high school spanned 1961 and 1962. It was a relatively quiet time, but tensions were building, tensions we would feel in the coming year. And just before the school year started, East Germany built the Berlin Wall. During 1962 and 1963, we were sophomores. Just after the school year started, the Soviet Union's construction of missile bases in Cuba led the Kennedy administration to order a naval blockade of Cuba that was lifted only after Russia promised to remove the missiles. The Washington to Moscow hotline communications link was established to reduce the risk of war. Dr. Michael DeBakey implanted an artificial heart in a human for the first time at Houston Hospital in April. In 1963 and 1964, we were juniors. On November 22, 1963, President Kennedy was fatally wounded in Dallas. Lyndon Johnson became president. Nelson Mandela was sentenced to life imprisonment in South Africa. He was eventually released 26 years later and would become president of the country. Three civil rights workers were murdered in Mississippi shortly after the school year ended. In 1964 and 1965, we were seniors. Shortly before the school year started, Congress approved the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution after North Vietnamese torpedo boats allegedly attacked U.S. destroyers. Nikita Khrushchev was deposed while out of the Soviet Union in October. Malcolm X was fatally wounded at a Harlem rally in New York City in February of 1965. And the Bell Fountain High School class of 1965 graduated in June. So let's look back at that senior year. September 1964, Bell Fountain, top of Ohio. School probably started that year on Monday, August 31st, and then we got a break for Labor Day a week later. We were 17 or maybe 18 or 19 years old. Most of us too young to drink even low beer, legally. Too young to vote, just kids. That year was to be our last as students in the Bell Fountain school system. And by 1972, even the old high school building would be gone. We began that final school year only nine months after the Kennedy assassination. Fidel Castro's Cuban revolution had defeated the Batista government in 1959. To most of us, that was ancient history. Two years earlier, though, we had lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis, and I think most of us remembered that vividly. 
The United States had advisors in Vietnam in 1964, and we began to deploy more in 1965. But there were few indications that the scuffle would turn into anything larger. Following 1965's Gulf of Tonkin resolution, the U.S. began bombing North Vietnam. In New York, the Port Authority started acquiring land where it would build two gigantic buildings. They would be called the World Trade Center. The buildings opened in 1972, the same year that the old Bell Fountain High School was demolished. As we started school in 1964, NASA was trying to figure out how to fulfill John Kennedy's goal of landing astronauts on the moon and bringing them safely back to Earth. In 1967, three astronauts would die in a fire on the launch pad, but two Americans, including Wapakoneta's Neil Armstrong, would walk on the moon in 1969. So we've gone from being high school seniors to just plain old seniors. 50 years was an unimaginable period to us back in 1965. That would have been more than twice the number of years we had even lived. Some of our teachers were 50, and of course some of our parents were 50, but they were old, and imagining ourselves even 30 years later wasn't very easy. Here we are, though, at the 30th anniversary of our 20th class reunion. Or maybe it's the 20th anniversary of our 30th class reunion or perhaps the 10th annual recognition of the 25-year anniversary of our 15th class reunion. Whatever. We are now older than our teachers were in 1965. We are older than our parents were in 1965. We are probably older than we thought we ever would be. We're old. But consider the alternative. Or don't. Instead, let's look back at those days in the mid-1960s.